Hello everybody, my name is Ilya. And my name is Tyler. Together we make up Cabre, a couple that loves to play board games. And today we'll be teaching you how to play River Valley Glassworks. This game is published by All Play and it's designed by Adam Hill, Ben Pinchback, and Matt Riddle. The art is done by Andrew Bossley. Now before we go to the table, we'll let you know that this is a prototype and some of the components and the way this game is presented might be a little bit different in the end final version. If you're interested about any of those changes, check out our description down below. With that out of the way, let's head on over to the table and learn how to play. As always, you'll begin by setting up. You'll place the glass pieces into the bag and shake it well, mixing all the pieces. If playing with five players, you'll add the black pieces. You'll then proceed to line up the six river tiles in the middle. You'll want to alternate the pieces that have one and two stones on them. You'll then draw one or two glass pieces on each tile, matching the number of stones on the tile. You'll place a lake tile at the end of the river and draw five glass pieces, placing them on the tile. Each player will now receive a glassworks board, along with a starting inventory of three glass pieces, which are drawn from the bank. You'll choose a first player, and you're now ready to play. In River Valley Glassworks, your goal is to score the most points by collecting a variety of river glass onto your glassworks board. Now let's go over the player turns. Each turn you'll have an option of placing and gathering river glass or drawing river glass from the lake. Let's start with place and gather. You'll choose a glass piece from your hand and place it on the river tile matching its shape. Alternatively, you can use two pieces of the same shape and place them on any river tile. After doing so, you'll choose an adjacent river tile and take all the pieces on it. You'll then move the empty river tile to the start of the river, slide the tiles to fill the gap, check the number of stones printed on the next tile, and place that many from the bank onto the empty tile you just moved. Now all the glass pieces you've taken from the river will immediately go onto your glassworks board. This is where the points are scored. You may decide the order you place the pieces, but there's a few rules you need to follow. If it's your first piece of that color, you'll place in the leftmost empty space starting a column of that color. If that color has already been placed in your glassworks board, you'll add it to the matching column. You may want to pay attention to the rarity chart here on your player board when deciding the order of how you want to place the new pieces. This is especially important if you collect more than one new color on your turn. Now if at any point you cannot place a piece because there's no room for a new color, or a column has been filled up, you'll place the piece in the overflow area, which will score you negative points at the end of the game. Ready for a strategy tip? Well, you only get to score two of your tallest columns. You'll notice the columns on the right score more points, and you'll also receive a decent chunk of points for filling rows. You'll want to balance filling rows and columns on the right side of the track to score the most points. And that's the place and gather action. Now the other action you can take instead is the draw action. You can draw four new glass pieces from the lake tile to your hand. Now important reminder here, all the glass pieces from the river go onto your glassworks board, while the glass pieces from the lake go into your hand. Your hand limit is five pieces. If you ever draw more, the excess will go into the overflow area. After the lake pieces are taken, they're immediately refilled back up to five. And that's the game! You'll keep playing taking turns until one player has 17 glass tokens on their board. Now a quick note here, in the final version of the game there will be an inventory track that each player will use to track the amount of glass pieces you have. This will help you see how many glass pieces each player has and how close the game is to ending. Now once the game end is triggered, the round will finish, each player will get an additional turn, and you're now ready to score. You'll first score the rows. You'll score each row from bottom to top. Each row scores based on how many spaces you filled left to right without gaps. You'll score each row matching the point value at the bottom. You'll then score your columns. You'll score the two tallest filled columns in your last works. If there are any ties, the leftmost tied column will score. Each column will score the points printed on the highest filled space. Finally, you'll lose three points for each piece in your overflow area. You'll tally the points, and the player with the most wins. And that is River Valley Glassworks. Do you have any questions? Leave them in the description down below or in the comments down below, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. We sure will. 
And of course, if you enjoyed this video, give us that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you're new here, because we make weekly board game content and we're always happy to have you along our journey. And we appreciate your support. Thank you so much and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.